Now we will discuss problems on Bessel's functions. Now have a look at the first problem. Prove j of of x equal to square root of 2 by pi x into sin x. First consider the Bessel's function. Put n equal to of in it. That gives j of of x equal to summation minus 1 power r divided by gamma of 1 by 2 plus 1 that is 3 by 2 plus r into r factorial into x by 2 power 1 by 2 plus 2r. This expression is in the form of a power m plus n that can be written as a power m into a power n and this a power m is free from r so we can keep it outside the summation so that gives x by 2 power of into the remaining summation now this is nothing but what square root of x by 2 and i will expand this summation put r equal to 0 on it that gives minus 1 power 0 is 1 0 factorial is 1 x by 2 power 0 is also 1 we just get gamma of 3 by 2 plus for r is equal to 1 we get minus 1 power 1 excuse minus 1 divided by gamma of 3 by 2 plus 1 which is gamma of 5 by 2 and 1 factorial into x by 2 power 2 into 1 now take r is equal to 2 that gives minus 1 power 2 that is 1 divided by gamma of 3 by 2 plus 2 that is gamma of 7 by 2 into 2 factorial and it's multiplied to x by 2 power 2 into 2 that is x by 2 power 4 and so on. But we know gamma of 1 by 2 is square root pi. And we also know how to evaluate this gamma of 3 by 2, gamma of 5 by 2 and gamma of 7 by 2. These are evaluated by using gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n into gamma of n. And you can note gamma of 3 by 2 is 1 by 2 times square root pi. Gamma of 5 by 2 is 3 by 2 into 1 by 2 into square root pi. That is nothing but 3 square root pi divided by 4. Similarly, gamma of 7 by 2 is 5 by 2 into 3 by 2 into 1 by 2 root pi which is equal to 15 divided by 8 root pi. Now substitute these things in this expression that gives j of of x is equal to square root of x by 2 times 1 divided by gamma of 3 by 2. So take the reciprocal of gamma of 3 by 2 that is 2 divided by square root pi. Take the reciprocal of gamma of 5 by 2 that is 4 divided by 3 root pi into x square divided by 2 square. Now take the reciprocal of gamma of 7 by 2 that gives 8 divided by 15 root pi into 2 factorial is 2 into x power 4 divided by 2 power 4 is 16 and so on. From all these expressions, 2 by root pi is common. Let me take it out. So, in the bracket we get 1 minus 2 is gone. We have got 2 divided by 3 now into x square by 4. And here 2 is taken out. So, 4 is there here. 4 divided by 15 2s are 30 into x power 4 divided by 16 and so on. Now here we have got square root 2 in the denominator and 2 in the numerator. 2 can be written as square root 2 whole square. So 1 square root 2, 1 square root 2 cancels and we get square root of 2x by pi into 1 minus and here 2 2s are 4. So we get 3 into 2 that can be written as 3 factorial. If we come to this one. We got 4 4s are 16. 
so which means 4 is multiplied to 30 that is nothing but 120 which is nothing but 5 factorial or I can just put it like this 30 can be written as 5 into 3 into 2 and with this 4 is included in between we get 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 that makes it 5 factorial so we get x power 4 by 5 factorial and so on now have a look at the requirement we want sin x in infinite series form sin x is given by x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial and so on by using McLaren series expansion. So what is missing then? x is missing in each term. So multiply and divide by x to this. So we get 1 by x into this expression is multiplied by x now. So that gives x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial and so on. Now here we have got square root x divided by x is nothing but what? Square root x whole square. 1 square root x, 1 square root x cancels and we get square root of 2 divided by pi into x. And that is multiplied to this expansion is what? McLaren series expansion of sin x. So we have our solution. This particular question is very important from the point of your examination. Along with this, you can see this question also appeared more number of times in the question papers. Now, I want you people to try this problem from your side. Prove j minus half of x is equal to square root of 2 by pi x cos x. It's a simple one. It works exactly similar to this. Please try it out. Now, let me move to the next result. Prove 2n jn of x equal to x times jn plus 1 of x plus jn minus 1 of x. First, let us consider the Bessel's function. Multiply it by 2n. That will give us 2n jn of x that is equal to summation. In this expression, 2n is taken inside the summation as this 2n doesn't depend on the value of r. Now to proceed further and to write it as sum of two terms, in the place of 2n, I will write 2n plus 2r minus 2r. Now this step is very very important for us. You need to remember this one to handle this problem. Now I will just consider 2n plus 2r in my first summation. I will take this minus 2r to the second summation. And since we are expecting x should be kept outside the summation, I am just taking 1x by 2 out of this to write it as x by 2 times x by 2 power n plus 2r minus 1. And this is what our second summation is. Now in the next step, I will just cancel this 2 with this 2 and this 2 with this 2. And this that gives us this step. Now, you can note that we are interested in expressing this summation and this summation in jn plus 1 or jn minus 1 form. That is, we want to express them in Bessel's function form. So, to do that, if I just compare this summation and this summation, I have got n plus r here, but here the numerator just contains minus 1 power r. So, which means n plus r should be taken off from here. For that, I am using gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n into gamma of n result to rewrite this one as n plus r into gamma of n plus r. So that I can cancel this n plus r and n plus r. And if I come to the second one, I do not have that liberty from gamma, but instead I will rewrite r factorial as r into r minus 1 factorial. That is always possible, right? 7 factorial can be written as 7 into 6 factorial. That is what I have done here. So that this r will get cancelled with this r. Now, n plus r, n plus r is cancelled here. The same thing is done here. r and r are cancelled. Now, have a look at this expression. I'll just keep x outside. And in this summation, 
I will rewrite this one into the required form. Now observe it carefully. This is r factorial gamma of this can be written as n minus 1 plus r plus 1. So that you can note that if you just compare this expression with this, in the place of n, I am finding n minus 1. And you can also rewrite this one as x by 2 power n minus 1 plus 2r. So in this entire summation, wherever n minus 1 is there, if I replace it by n, this is exactly same as our j n of x. So this represents what? j n minus 1 of x. Now if you come to this part, we have got r minus 1 factorial in the denominator. Which means for r equal to 0, we get minus 1 factorial, which is something not defined. Which means that my summation should start from what? r is equal to 1 to infinity. And further, I am just, I just want to keep the, even this power in C in terms of r minus 1. So for that what I am doing, I will just take one negative sign out and that negative sign is multiplied with this to have positive sign here. So I will rewrite this one as minus 1 power r minus 1 divided by r minus 1 factorial into gamma of n plus r plus 1 into this expression is written as it is. Now, I can't use the definition of Bessel's function unless your lower limit starts with 0. Now what should be done? So the simple thing, I need to replace r minus 1 by k. If I do that, we will get it as summation r minus 1, take this 1 to the left hand side, r minus 1 that called as k, k equal to 0 to infinity. This is minus 1 power k divided by k factorial into gamma of n plus r is what? k plus 1. That is what I have written, k plus 1 plus 1 is kept as it is. And even in the power way, I am doing the same thing. x by 2 power n plus 2 times k plus 1. That gives 2k plus 2 minus 1. So, in this expression, we will get x by 2 power n plus 1 plus 2k. Because 2 minus 1 becomes plus 1. I am just grouping that plus 1 with this n to have n plus 1 plus 2k. Now, observe this expression. And you can note that in the place of n plus 1, if I place n, it is exactly same as this Bessel's function. So, this can be written as jn plus 1 of x. So, I can take x common to have our required result. And this result is special because this recurrence relation connects three consecutive values of Bessel's function, jn minus 1, jn, and jn plus 1. And let us see the application of this in handling these problems. Consider 2n jn of x is equal to x times jn plus 1 of x plus jn minus 1 of x. We also proved j of of x and j minus of of x is given by square root of 2 by pi x cos x. Now my first result is j3 by 2 of x equal to this expression. To prove this, this is what I am doing. I am using n is equal to of in, my, in this recurrence relation. So that gives 2 into 1 by 2 will get cancelled to give 1 j1 by 2 of x that is equal to x times 1 by 2 plus 1 that is j3 by 2 of x. 1 by 2 minus 1 that is j minus of of x. I know what is j of j minus of use them to find j3 by 2 of x. Now let me substitute these values j1 by 2 of x plus x times j minus of is written plus j3 by 2 of x. Now solve for j3 by 2 of x that is j3 by 2 of x is equal to 1 by x times square root of 2 by pi x sin x minus square root of 2 by pi x cos 6. From these two terms what is common? Square root of 2 by pi x is common that gives us sin x pi x minus cos 6. So simple. I But to handle this one I need to remember this recurrence relation along with j of and j minus of values. 
I hope you people can similarly, similarly to the remaining problems but still I will take up this fourth problem okay for this one let me put n is equal to minus 3 by 2 in this recurrence relation that will give us 2 into minus 3 by 2 j minus 3 by 2 of x is equal to x times j minus 5 by 2 of x plus j minus of x I know j minus of j minus 3 by 2 so substitute them here and solve for j minus 5 by 2 of x so j minus 5 by 2 of x is equal to this 2 2 cancels we get minus 3 by x j minus 3 by 2 of x and take this to the left hand side that is minus j minus half of x substitute j minus 3 by 2 of x j minus half of x from these two what is common square root of 2 by pi x is common and we will get 3 cos x by x square plus 3 sin x by x minus cos x and by combining cos x expression we get 3 minus x square by x square cos x plus 3 sin x by x this is what the required result is okay I hope you people are comfortable with this results now let me move to the next property called the orthogonality property of Bessel's functions it states that if alpha and beta are distinct roots of the equation j n of x equal to 0 then value of this integral is equal to 0 if alpha is not equal to beta and value of this integral is equal to 1 by 2 times j n dash of alpha square if alpha is equal to beta and let me prove this one given alpha and beta are distinct roots of j n of x equal to 0 which means alpha and beta satisfies this equation to give j n of alpha equal to 0 and j n of beta is also equal to 0. Further, we know that j n of x is solution of the Bessel's equation x square d square y by dx square plus x dy by dx plus x square minus n square y equal to 0. Now if I go for the change of scale property that is in the place of x if I write ax in that case what happens that we see we can note that this differential equation is d square y by d of ax square and here ax square this a is a constant that will come out and it will give a square in the denominator that a square will get cancelled with a square here we will get the same expression x square d square y by dx square as our first term. If we come to the second term ax dy by d of ax. Once again a comes out that a will get cancelled with a which is present here. So that once again gives x dy by dx. If we come to this one x square becomes a square x square minus n square into y equal to 0. So y is equal to j n of ax is the solution of the Bessel's equation in this form. You can note that these two expressions are exactly similar to this except in the place of a we are finding alpha and beta which means this j n of alpha x is the solution of this differential equation that is I am supposed to replace a square by alpha square and v equal to j n beta of x will be the solution of this equation in the place of a square I am supposed to write beta square okay the next part is I am supposed to bring j n and j n beta together for that u is j n alpha v is j n beta for that what I will do now I am supposed to combine these two equations 1 and 2 for that this is what the operation I am performing now you people need to remember this step that makes the thing simple for us that is multiply equation 1 by v by x square and take the difference with the second equation multiplied by u by x square x square x square cancels we will get v times d square u by dx square plus 
1 x cancel so we get v by x du by dx plus alpha square v square u and x square will cancel with x square here so we get minus n square u v by x square in the same lines in the second equation by multiplying by minus u x square we get minus u d square v by dx square minus u by x dv by dx minus beta square v u plus n square u v by x square is equal to 0 and you can note this n square u v by x square with a negative sign cancels with plus n square u v by x square and we can combine few terms here I can combine this term with this term to write it as v d square u by dx square minus u d square v by dx square and I will combine this term with this term by taking 1 by x common next I will combine these two terms by taking u b common that is equal to 0 now I will rewrite this expression in the form d by dx of v du by dx minus u dv by dx now the question arises how is it possible to write for that this is what the answer is if I differentiate this expression with respect to x we get v into differentiation of this plus du by dx into differentiation of v okay dv by dx into du by dx minus u into differentiation of dv by dx minus dv by dx into u by dx and you can note this term will get cancelled with this term and you will get v d square u by dx square minus u d square v by dx square which means this expression can be written in this form i will rewrite the next two terms as it is and i've just taken this term to the right hand side here to have beta square minus alpha square uv now i will multiply throughout by x that will give x d by dx of v du by dx minus u dv by dx plus v du by dx minus u dv by dx equal to beta square minus alpha square x uv now you can note that you can just combine these two terms to write as a single term d by dx of x into v du by dx minus u dv by dx is it possible yes you can note that d by dx of this is product of two functions x into differentiation of this plus this function into differentiation of x with respect to x okay good and the remaining part is written as it is now i will rewrite this equation as x uv is equal to 1 by beta square minus alpha square into d by dx of this expression now this x uv is nothing but x j n alpha x into j n beta of x dx j n beta of x now this x u v is nothing but x j n alpha x into j n of beta x so now i will integrate this equation with respect to x from 0 to 1 to have my lhs so that gives integration x u v with respect to x equal to 1 by beta square minus alpha square here the differentiation is with respect to x and we are performing integration also with respect to x these two are inverse operation of each other so these two will get cancelled to give our integration value as x v into du by dx minus u dv by dx and in this one substitute the limits x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 you can note for the lower limit the value of this one is 0 this exists only for the upper limit and you can note if u is j n of alpha x du by dx is alpha j n dash of alpha x and since v is j n of beta x dv by dx is beta 
j and dash of beta x. So now let me substitute all these things here. Integration x into u is j n alpha x, v is j n of beta x, dx equal to 1 by beta square minus alpha square times. For the upper limit, x is 1, that is done. v is nothing but j n of beta x, and with x is equal to 1, it is just j n of beta. And du by dx is alpha j n dash of alpha into 1 minus u is j n of alpha into 1 into beta j n dash of beta. Okay, so let me call this one as equation number 3. Now we can talk about two situations from this equation. Situation number 1 alpha is not equal to beta. Situation number 2 alpha is equal to beta. Now if I consider alpha is not equal to beta, there is no change in the left hand side and if you come to the right hand side, we can note since alpha and beta are roots of the equation, j n of alpha, j n of beta are zeros, which means this expression and this expression both are zero, so this RHS becomes zero for us. Now let us move to the situation number two, that is alpha is equal to beta. But thus, there is no issue with the left hand side. We can write that one as integration 0 to 1 x j n of alpha x whole square dx. It is equal to. If we come to the right hand side, 0 and since I am taking beta is equal to alpha, denominator also becomes 0. We get 0 by 0 form. So what I will do now, I will just assume alpha is the root of the equation and I will mark this one 0 and I will take limit beta tends to alpha for the remaining expression. Now alpha j n dash of alpha is, is a constant with respect to the limit, I just keep it outside and use L hospital's rule for the remaining expression. That will give us j n dash of beta divided by 2 times beta differentiation of alpha square is 0. Now as beta tends to alpha we get it is j n dash of alpha divided by 2 alpha. Now alpha and alpha will get cancelled to give us 1 by 2 times j n dash of alpha whole square. So that is what the result is. From the point of your examination this property is once again very very important. You will find some more problems in the notes. So please go through them and every result which I have discussed here are very important from the point of your examination. I hope you people will be comfortable with this. If you have any doubts, please come back. Thank you all.